Buddha fist, fist. The feet, right? So we want to work. And notice my thumbs, so we're twisting out. We're breaking up adhesive tissue in there. And then we can go ahead and turn the thumb inward, which is you're twisting it the other way, because we're confusing the tissue and now allowing it to organize into scar tissue. Especially if you sit all day and you don't do anything with your feet. Your feet are in a locked position all day long under the desk. So that's the first one. The second one, we'll do what? Pin, pin the feet with, with your knee. With your knee. So we're going to put a knee on there. And we can just press with the kneecap. Again, observe your patient. Make sure. And then once I pin it, I can start to roll the calcaneus back and forth. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Same on this side, so you can go ahead. And remember, you're going to take your time. I'm doing this in a short period of time to demonstrate, but you guys can stay on the feet for People love the feet work. And then you can balance yourself on the feet. You can kick the feet up and down as you slowly slide off. So you're getting vibrational energy into there, and then slide off. That feel good? Not on the toes, but the rest of the Yeah, the toes were a little bit off the... Now we're going to go ahead and pull muscle off bone. Remember, try not to press on the meridians itself or on the bone. And then thumb press, so we're going to put the hand in this position to protect our thumbs. And we're just going to slowly walk up the center. This is not thumb chasing thumb, this is just single thumb walks on either side. And you, your goal is probably the PSIS. Come on back. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and do some work on our calf. Work on the other side. All right, then the sacral squish. So you're going to have to position your, your foot with the calcaneus on the outside, the lateral side. You're going to grab tissue, roll that tissue out. Put your palms on that tissue and then use your body weight to squish. So real deep compression on that uh, gas drugs. Like that. Are you still rolling the tissue away? Or are you just yeah, so it's, it's actually, you can see, Jude, it's rolling like this to the outside. So what you want to do is, is I, as I'm putting myself in position, I'm sort of using my palm heels to roll it, roll it, roll it. When I feel that it's rolled off the bone, then I put my uh, PSIS on there at sacrum, and I go ahead and then put pressure on my whole body on those hands to give an extra amount of weight. And you can actually lift your feet off the ground, so it's great. You're skipping the knee though, right? So you do the low leg and the upper leg. You don't press on the knee at all. Right? Well, when we, walk, when we walk with our thumbs, you can actually press behind no, the I knee. No, I mean the sacral squish. You... Sacral squish, I usually just do in this area. Oh, okay. Not I don't usually do it up here. It's too hard to hang on to, especially people that have you know, she's a bike rider. This area right here is going to be really tough to grab onto. Tissues are really strong, muscular. So keep it in this area. People need work in their calves, right? We're going to lift the leg up. <clears throat> you see heel to calf. Bent leg, you guys see at the bottom of the page? So use heel to carefully compress the tissue. So what you want to do is, let me put this up here and bring this out. You can bend it like this if you want. That helps. Then you can go ahead and use your heel now to go ahead and compress. Again, it's muscle off bone. You can go one, two, three, two, one if you want. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you want to put more pressure on it, you can. So you would just lean on the on the thigh, put your head on the thigh, even put more. You know, get your melon on there. <laughs> put it on. 10, 16 pounds, 20 pounds, so like that.
All right, so we're going to do that on both sides. We all good with that one? Yeah. Then we're going to do the anvil. So now we're going to bend the leg to 90 degrees, and we're going to roll our forearm on the foot. So now we're going to take our forearm and just roll it like that, sort of on the foot. Those of you that know Toyna, if you want, you can actually do a little bit of Gwenfa, just to stimulate a little bit. Now, when I'm doing this, you see my pressure? So what I'm doing is I'm bending the, the toe down. It's in dorsiflexion, right? So I'm actually going to stretch their Achilles tendon now. So I usually hook in here to give me some support. And you just roll. Now, on the bottom of the foot, those of you who took um, supine, pick six points on the foot. And I didn't bring the, uh, the illustration of this, but I'll, I'll try to get it for you for next week. But basically, just go ahead and press one, two, three, four, five, six. There's not a whole lot of space that your elbow can fit into. So just pick three points on the medial side of the foot, and then you can go ahead and pick three points on the lateral side of the foot. And use your knee as an, an as an anvil. So this is the hammer, right? And then the knee's in the anvil. So if I don't put the knee there, as I press, his foot's just going to dorsiflex. It's not going to do much for him. You okay? Okay, the next one is thumb circle at the metatarsals. So what I would do is I'd change position, and you can get your thumbs, and you can make these kind of circles. Now you can just work one if you want, like that. You can also do it from this position if you want. You can do thumb circles on one side, thumb circles on the other. But basically you're just bringing some blood into there, making it feel alive again. And then we can uh, wiggle and then distract the toe. So you want to wiggle the toe first, and then distract means to pull. So wiggle, wiggle. There you got one loosened up. Yeah. You can also bend the toes over the calf if you want. You can bend them back. So again, I use my thigh to help my hand. So instead of doing this, Turkey seat. Mm -hmm. Doing that, that's yeah. that's strength. This is I'm just turning my body. Okay. So I'm using my what? My core. Now you tell your mm -hmm. clients all the time, use your core, use your core. So you gotta start doing it. Alright, then the last one, uh, rotate ankle and plantar flex the foot. So we can go ahead and rotate the ankle. Now if you want to make it more fun, this is a little thing you can add to it. You just go ahead, I'll do it on the outside so you guys can see it better. So imagine his foot was up here. You just go ahead and sit underneath it like this. And now I can rotate the ankle this way. You can either do it standing up like I just showed you, or in this position. And what I like to do is grab the calcaneus and rotate the bones. Grab the metatarsals and rotate the phalanges. Grab the proximal phalanges and rotate the distal phalanges, the toes actually. Then you can start going backwards, so switch hands. And again, you're going to do it maybe five times. So I'm just cutting it short a little bit. Grab on the calcaneus. Notice how my body's moving. This is wrong. Look at No body movement. Here's correct. So the arm stays in the same position. Well then how does, how do I affect the foot like that? The body moves. See? Here's just arm. Here's the body. Big difference, right? Okay? So that you can do it that way instead of the other way, which is here. You can just turn the foot this way. So if you want to do it both ways, that's fine. And then it says plantar flex, so we're going to plantar flex the foot a little bit. Okay, try those.